If you run Arch Linux or an Arch Linux based distribution, chances are the main reason that you run Arch Linux is because of the AUR. The AUR is the Arch User Repository. It's basically a community repository of software that anybody can add package builds to the AUR. And it's one of those things, it's, it's like thousands and thousands of packages in this thing. You know, pretty much any piece of software that's out there and is available on Linux, pretty much you can find in the AUR. It really makes Arch attractive because many Linux distributions, you know, packaging is a problem. You know, you find pieces of software you want that just aren't packaged for that distribution. And the AUR kind of solves this problem for Arch. But there are a couple of really big downsides to the AUR. For one thing, Almost all the packages in the AUR are having to be built from source. So basically what the AUR is, is it's a bunch of package builds. And these package builds are essentially scripts telling Arch how to make the package. You know, where to go grab the source from, and then now that I have the source for this package, what commands should I do to actually compile this thing and actually build it from source? And, you know, it takes a while to build software from source. It's not like binaries. Like, when you just get something from Pac-Man through the standard Pac-Man commands on Arch, of course, those are already pre-built binaries. If I do a Pac-Man dash capital S uh, Firefox, for example, it's not compiling Firefox. That would take like eight hours, right? It's just downloading an already pre-built binary of Firefox. It's already been built on another computer and then, you know, just sent out to the masses via this binary. But the AUR is different. A lot of packages in the AUR have to be compiled in that compilation if it's a really big piece of software can take several minutes to, in some cases, several hours. A second big problem with the AUR is sometimes the package builds are not correct, meaning that, you know, this package build that's in the AUR that's designed to build this particular piece of software is not correct and the package doesn't build correctly. I've tried to install many, many, probably dozens of different things from the AUR over the years where I go into the terminal and I try to make the package using the package build and it just doesn't build correctly. And sometimes I actually go and edit the package build myself to fix the problem, but a lot of times I don't because it's a pain because and then I have to go investigate what the problem with somebody else's package build script is. And you know, if I really need the piece of software, I might do that but a lot of times I just move on and I install something else but one of the things that solves these two big problems with the AUR is using something like the chaotic AUR what the chaotic AUR is it's essentially a repository of binary packages binary packages that were built from AUR packages. So somebody has already decided that, hey, I'm, we're gonna take uh, all these popular packages from the AUR, you know, a lot of common packages that a lot of people are gonna install anyway. Let's go ahead and just create binaries from them and then put them in their own repository that you can add to your pacman.conf. And this really speeds up installing some of these very big packages especially. Now the chaotic AUR has been around for many many years and I've always kind of resisted using it because I've never really saw the point and I was like well you know what why have pre-built binaries I'll just compile it myself through the regular AUR but <laughs> as I get older and a little more lazy you know, I've, I've went ahead and just added the chaotic AUR to all my machines now. It just makes sense. To add the chaotic AUR to your system, all you need to do is enter these four commands in the terminal. You can see these commands are prepended with a hash symbol that signifies that they should be run as the root user, or you could just run them with sudo privileges. So enter these four commands in the terminal, and then you need to add these two lines to your slash etsy slash pacman.conf file. This just takes a few seconds. Matter of fact, I can show you this in action. Let me open a terminal here and let me zoom in. And let's just take these one at a time. So I'm going to copy that and then let me do a sudo and then do the paste. Oh, mess that up. Let me get to the beginning of the line here. Sudo pacman dash key dash dash receive key. So what we're doing is we're receiving a key from a key server. And then the next command is 
locally signing the key is what this command is doing. And then the next command, now that we've got the keys, we're gonna run sudo and then pacman dash capital U. So we're installing a package, a, a third party binary that we went and grabbed and we want pacman to install this third party binary. This binary, by the way, is the chaotic key ring. Proceed with installation, yes. And then finally, the last command is another pacman dash U command. Let me sudo and then paste the line. And this is installing the chaotic mirror list package. And now that you have entered those four lines, finally do a sudo vim slash etsy slash pacman.com or whatever text editor you want to use. I'm using vim, but you could sudo nano slash etsy slash pacman.com. And let me make sure that the chaotic AUR is not already enabled in this. It is not. So I'm going to go to the very end of this file. And then I need to add these two lines. So the way you add a repo here in Pac-Man, the name of the repo is in brackets. So chaotic dash AUR is the name of the repo. And then include with a capital I space equals space. And all this needs to be is slash Etsy slash Pac-Man dot D slash chaotic dash mirror list. Now let me write and quit. And now let me do a sudo pacman dash capital S Y Y U to update all the repos, resync all the repos, including the new one I just added. Let's decline the update. But if I go back to the top of this, I had a lot of Haskell that needed to update. But you can see now when it was checking the repos, one of the repos it was checking was the chaotic AUR. And I can verify that the chaotic AUR is available on the system. If I do a sudo pacman dash capital S, let me install something from the chaotic AUR. Maybe I want to install brave dash bin because brave is an AUR package. Uh, brave dash bin is a binary of brave, but chaotic AUR also has brave package. Now I don't know exactly which repo it would pull down brave dash bin because I also have Arco Linux and uh, the repos on the system. Arco Linux has brave package. So let's take Tell Pac-Man which of these repos to pull Brave from. So let's pretend this with chaotic dash AUR because that's the name of the repo slash name of package Brave dash bin. And now you can see it finds Brave from the chaotic AUR just fine. And it does have a newer version than the one I'm currently on. So I guess I could go ahead and install it. Although I really should do a full system update instead of just updating one package, but I'll do a, a proper Pac-Man SYU after I'm done with the video. But that is the chaotic AUR. Very easy. Again, it takes about two minutes to add this to any Arch based system. And then you have a very large list of AUR packages that are already built as binary, so you don't have to waste time compiling things like Brave, which we already saw was here. If I go through, uh, this is packages.org, pkgs.org, they do have the chaotic AUR repos listed here. And you have things like Google Chrome, of course, is already you know, pre-built as a binary. I saw that, you know, the Godot gaming engine was here. I saw things like Discord, you know, pretty much all any popular AUR package is probably already here. I'm just scrolling through so you guys can see a lot of font packages are here. A lot of the NVIDIA drivers are already built in here. Even some of the popular AUR helpers, if I do a search for Paru, you can see that both Paru and Paru-Git are already here and pre-built because Paru does have to uh, compile. When you install it from the AUR, Paru compiles. But again, you can just grab a binary of Paru already built from the chaotic AUR. So, you know, this is the way I'm going these days. I'm just going to go ahead and add the chaotic AUR. And as long as the chaotic AUR has a package, then I'll just install the binary from it. Now, of course, the chaotic AUR does not have everything from the AUR. It's a very it's a small curated list of things from the AUR not everything from the AUR is packaged as a binary in the chaotic AUR for one thing a lot of the stuff in the AUR is broken we already talked about it you know so a lot of stuff just doesn't build properly anyway so how could the chaotic AUR have binary packages of it you know these things that that don't build correctly anyway but at least you know I would say that if you grab something from the chaotic AUR that's already been built as a binary and install it then chances are it's a much higher chance that those binary 
binary packages are going to work than some of the crap you find in the regular AUR. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Arcotic, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, Darloff, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Urion, Paul, Peace, Arshon, Fedor, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tian, Ren, Tools, Delder, War Gen 2, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at the chaotic AUR would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.